on the show today. Liberty Baseball off to one of its best starts in years, and we sit down with preseason All-American DJ Artists. Then, when a medical condition appeared to bring an end to the basketball career of Brody Hicks, see how the Liberty Flames rallied around their teammate. It's all ahead on this edition of Game On. What is up? Welcome to your favorite show and mine. This is Game On. As always, alongside Rhett McGibbon, I'm Matt Warner, and Bobby Bolig will join us in just a few minutes. Yeah, Matt, the start of every sports season is special, but yep. there's nothing quite like the beginning of baseball. The smell of the ballpark, the yep. pop of the ball going into the catcher's mitt, the crack of a bat. Yeah. It does not get much better. No, and it doesn't get much better the way the Flames have started That's this right. season. In fact, one of their best starts in recent history. Liberty began the 2018 campaign by sweeping VCU. And then they would try to take down another Commonwealth rival That's right. in James Madison. Let's give you a look. A little midweek action. Flames and the Dukes on the mound to be the true freshman. Brady Stamper making his first ever start for the Flames. And with Liberty leading 1-0 in the fourth, Stamper would get some help from his defense. Michael Morgan doubles into the corner, but Todd to Locklear to Embry cuts down the run at the dish and keeps the Flames in front. Now Stamper would go on to finish out five sparkling innings in this ballgame. He didn't allow a run while striking out eight, an impressive debut for the true freshman. Now the young hitters for the Flames, they continue to swing it well also. John Embry, three hits, including this RBI knock in the fifth inning. Liberty would take a 2-1 advantage into the eighth, looking for a little insurance, and Trey Todd would help him find it. The nice. two-run jack, his second of the season. That'd be more than enough for the Flames as they win it 4-1 and begin the year 4-0 for the first time since 2012. Well, great to see the baseball team off to a strong start. And also great to see our very own Bobby Bolig here. And Bobby, DJ Artist, one of those athletes, you just you can't take your eyes off of them at the ballpark. And of course, if you're following Liberty Baseball at all, you will know the name DJ Artist. Oh, yeah. But I will tell you, my all-time favorite part of this job is getting to know how they became that athlete and who in particular helped them become that athlete. And this week, we got to hear some of those answers from DJ Artist in the dugout. DJ, this obviously isn't the warmest day to be sitting in the dugout, but I'm I'm guessing this, out of all the baseball you've played, this can't be the coldest day. Uh, no, okay. absolutely not. Last season we had a couple games that were pretty bad, so. Word on the street says that you're a big basketball fan. Anyone who looks at your Twitter will know for sure that you're a Kobe fan. Absolutely. I got I had a pair of Kobe cleats last year. You know, he's you one of my favorite players, you know. <laughs> Always grown up to be a huge Lakers fan because of Kobe. You know, I watch almost every single game now. Now, did you play basketball growing up or? I did a little bit. You know, my dad took me out at a very younger age because I liked it more than baseball. And he told me I wasn't going to be tall enough to be like 5'10". And um, it's very hard to make it if you're that short. So my mom always said I had a wiffle ball bat in my hand. They pitched it to me and I'd hit over their head and just be like, wow, like look at them run. I'd take off at such a young age. And um, they just said I was so fast. Like even the stairs. Like, <laughs> I'd try and run up the stairs as a little kid, you know, they said I'd take off, they couldn't catch me, but, um... So just, you've always been fast. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think I was, might have been fast when I was little than I am now, <laughs> so... Growing up, who was who the guy that you wanted to be? Which major league player? I wanted to be, like, A-Rod. Okay. Know, he's an infielder, but I'm an outfielder, so... But I just, I just like, watched him when I was young, you know. All right, now, after travel ball, you go to high school, and you had lots of success there. You know, when was it that you were, like... I'm kind of good at this. This is, this, is, this is for me, and you thought maybe I could have a future in this. Middle school, you know, I was just a backside hitter. You know, I was pretty fast. Just knew how to use my speed. You know, yeah. Never really had much pop. I was always one of the smallest dudes on the team. I felt like, so um, she used my speed. That's one thing that you'll pick up too on you is you're very, very fast. You're the leadoff hitter. What what, what is that like? You know, being the leadoff hitter, having to go out there and hit first. I like I like setting the tone. You know, okay. I like um I like trying to get on base, get something going for the guys. You know. I feel like they look up to me to get on base and get everything going for them and try and take a bag if I can, you know. Get on, get on second, it's kind of like getting a double. Mm -hmm. So um, just setting the tone for them, get everybody going. I read an article that you heard that you got drafted at your banquet. Yeah, I did. Okay, tell me our, that experience. Yeah. That's, 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 in yeah. that's interesting. It was our high school banquet and they were like doing all the awards, yeah. and, you know, like halfway through before we got to the awards, you know, those DJs got drafted. Everybody was pretty happy for me and um, I was a pretty good moment for me. You know, now you, you know, take the next step, come to Liberty, mm -hmm. you know, have an outstanding freshman year, Big South <laughs> Freshman of the Year. Yeah. Next year you become Big South Player of the Year. Mm -hmm. Now you're a junior. How much, you know, weight does that, that carry? Uh, it doesn't really bother me. I feel like um, 
I really want to go to a regional, you know, mm -hmm. and win a conference championship or something here with my team, you know. I, I really want to win. That's all I'm really worried about. I'm not really worried about myself right now at all. You know, one of the stats you led last year was led in walks in mm -hmm. the country. How did you develop such a good eye? <laughs> <laughs> well, at a young age, my, um, my dad always told me, you know, don't swing unless it's a strike. And he, you know, he wasn't one of the best at throwing BP, so I'd go like, you know, <laughs> I go like eight or nine pitches in a row without seeing a strike, you know. Every time I get one, I make the most of it. And um, he always just told me, don't swing unless it is, so. I thought that was out. I thought that was out too. Hit the top of the fence, did Yep. We talk a lot about your dad. Yeah. What is, you know, the best advice or something you bring to every game, mm -hmm. a piece of advice that your dad has given you? Um, it's just something he's always preaches 100%. You know, when he was coaching me when I was at a young age, just. The whole team, he'd always let everybody know 100%. I can't get mad at you if you try your best. And as you go into your, your junior year now for Liberty, mm -hmm. and for you personally, is there mm -hmm. any um, you know, goals that you want to achieve? I mean, I, I feel like I can be one of the best players in the nation. You know, I, I want to prove it this year, stay healthy, hopefully. And um, that's the plan. Of course, the dream is to make it to the MLB, yeah. you know, be a leader of a team be a guy for a city. In the pros, you play every single day, Absolutely. unlike any other sport. Mm -hmm. So. You know, have you ever thought of that, like what your life would be like, you know, playing every every day? Yeah, I mean, I got a taste of it yeah. during summer ball. Okay. So I mean, I it's a pretty talented league up there, but um, it's it's definitely different. It's harder, but um, I like I like playing every single day. So until it happens, you know, I'm, I'm here at Liberty, playing, trying to get a team to a regional. So. All right, that's all I have for you, DJ. Thanks Ooh. so much. We're excited to follow you this season and, and your team. So thank, thank you for joining. Thank you, nice. I have fun. Thanks again, to DJ, for sitting down in the dugout. It was awesome to see, you know, not only meet him, but he mm -hmm. also meet his family. And you know, you see it in the video that that video with the, him hitting the bat yeah, was, right. when he was younger. I mean, you don't you don't see that every day. No, it's pretty cool to see memories when you're with your dad. And you know, he's talking there about wanting to play professionally and go to the majors and be an impact player. You can tell he's put the work in this off season because he has put on some beef. Like last year, a skinny guy. This year, you look at him go up to the plate and he has got some muscle on his body. I will say that's the first thing he sat down. I said, what's new? He said, I gained 25 pounds. I said, well, you look like it. This guy has gained 25 <laughs> pounds as well, even though it's not as evident, Matt Warner. Thank you for noticing, guys. Appreciate that. <laughs> Turning to women's hoops now, where the Lady Flames continue their pursuit of a Big South regular season crown. Carrie Green and company taking on last place Winthrop. Liberty get off to a little bit of a slow start in this one. In fact, they trailed 26-25 at the half. But in the third quarter, the Lady Flames put an end to any upset aspirations. LU went on a 22-1 run and blew this game wide open. The Lady Flames led by 15 points from freshman Ashton Baker, while KK Barber chipped in with 11. Liberty cruises to a 73-53 win as they shoot 68% from the field in the second half, while holding Winthrop to just 22% over that same stretch. With the win, Liberty improves to 13-2 in conference play. And that keeps them atop the Big South Conference. Currently one game better than the Red Hot Radford Highlanders who have won seven straight. Asheville and High Point both continue to play well. And then there's a pretty steep drop as no one else is above 500 in conference play. A reminder, Liberty will host the Big South Tournament beginning on March 8th. Well, let's turn our attention to softball, where the Flames hosted the Liberty Softball Challenge. The Ladies of Liberty would enter the weekend with a record of 5-0 and look to continue their hot play during their home opening weekend. LU would be battling against Central Michigan and Delaware State in the second game of the challenge against the Chippewas. Liberty would drop its first contest of the season. Then the Flames would move on to play Delaware State. Once again, DiMartino, she has just been money this season. She would down the Hornets with a one hitter, setting up a rematch versus CMU. In this game, Amber Bishop carrying a big stick. She would tie it up in the seventh with a blast over the wall, and that would set the stage for Tori Zavodny. She would line a triple out to right center, which would score the go-ahead run, and then DiMartino would come in and just polish off the bottom of the ninth, giving Liberty the win and an eight and one record. Well, to the pool we go now. Liberty swimming and diving, competing at the CCSA Championships. And for the fourth year in a row, the Lady Flames finish in second place behind Florida Gulf Coast. But this year, they do it with a program record 1,501 and a half points. Some of the highlights for LU include Peyton Keener being named the most outstanding freshman in the meet. She's the fourth Lady Flame to ever earn that honor. It was also a big meet for Prudence Rooker and Alicia Finnegan. Each of them earned three podium finishes, and Rooker now has eight career podium finishes at the CCSA. SA Championships, which is tied for the most in program history. LU would also set a meet and conference record in their victory in the 400 free relay. 
Well, from the pool to the frozen pond, Liberty Hockey finishes off the regular season as they took on the Mountaineers of West Virginia in a record-setting weekend. Friday night would be a memorable night for senior Tim Barima. Tim was absent in last week's games due to the passing of his granddad. He would go on to score a hat trick in the game, a beautiful tribute to his granddad as the Flames win 9-1. Game two, the Flames' power play would be the story. LU would connect on six of eight opportunities, giving them the eventual 10 to one victory. Now this one would also establish a new consecutive win record in program history, as Liberty has won 17 wow. straight games. Next up for the Flames are Nationals in Columbus, Ohio on March 10th against reigning national champ Central Oklahoma. Well, coming up, Liberty football coach Turner Gill gives us an update on spring ball. Plus, when Brody Hicks' dream of playing basketball looked like it was over, see how the Flames helped him get through this difficult time. Game on is coming right back. So I grew up in a Christian home. I was just kind of wishy-washy doing the, the Christian kid sort of thing uh, up through 11th grade where I had a friend uh, basically convert out of Christianity. It rocked my world a little bit. I wasn't exactly sure that people could actually do that. So it kind of put me on a little bit of a quest for truth for myself. This is the summer between my senior year of high school and my freshman year of college. I went to a Christian concert. There was a tent uh, sponsored by Liberty, and he was like, you could sign up for this scholarship drawing that we have. As I signed up for the scholarship, I myself sent a prayer up, and I'm still contemplating agnosticism and faith and religion and uh, God and the existence thereof. And as I was leaving the tent after signing up for the scholarship, I asked God, I was like, God, if you're real, like, I'll see you. A couple of songs later, they announced that I had won uh, a $16,000 scholarship to come to Liberty University. My first couple of years here was a period of great growth for myself. And as I read more of the word and, and was poured into by uh, strong leaders and good mentors, uh, I began to develop uh, as a leader, as a, as a man, as a, uh, as a responsible, functioning adult. I'd always kind of wanted to be an RA, uh, and as I stepped into the role of prayer leader, it seemed logical to progress to another level, uh, to a spiritual life coach and then to visit an assistant. Uh, my experience at Liberty has been uh, a once in a lifetime opportunity. Uh, I don't think I would go back and trade it for anything because uh, I've seen a lot of growth in myself. Um, a lot of friendships developed. It, it's a really unique kind of place. Yeah, I wouldn't, wouldn't trade it for the world. Hey, welcome back to the show. Flames football is entering its second week of spring ball as they prepare to make the jump to the ranks of the FBS this coming season. They have a number of new faces already on campus, and head coach Turner Gill tells us he is thrilled with the level of competition he's seen thus far. Oh, it's, it's been very competitive. There's no question about that. And uh, I, I like the guys' motivation. Uh, there's been a lot of encouragement. Uh, there's been a lot of talk. Uh, the competitiveness offense against the defense, that's always been very, very strong. And I think it's been a little bit more intense in this uh, aspect of it because there is a lot more competition at a lot of positions uh, across the board there. And again, we're trying to also those some guys, the few that are actually have pretty much their starting position, but we're trying to find depth. And uh, I think they're trying to help the other guys to get better so it helps our football team. 
Well, the beautiful thing about being an athlete who has Christ as their savior is that there is always hope. No matter the situation, a bad game, injury, or even retirement, he is there for you. And fortunately for Liberty Basketball's Brody Hicks, his faith and basketball family kept him afloat during one of sports' tough moments. For a freshman, there will always be anticipation and excitement about what the upcoming year will bring. For Brody Hicks, his freshman year was full of unforgettable moments, but there was none greater than the moment he became part of the Liberty Flames basketball family. I was nuts, like meeting Coach McKay and then getting up here and meeting all the all the players and stuff. Like I felt like I really fit in and I was gonna make a lot of good friends and we started playing and I just loved it. But Brody's excitement was short-lived. A routine physical raised concerns regarding his health. I can remember getting on the phone with my mom and telling her, and then uh, the doctor had asked my mom and dad to come up for an appointment, and they were kind of saying, well, there's some stuff going on, and we don't really know whether or not you should be able to play. And so my dad asked the doctor, like, if it were your son, would you let him play? And the doctor said no. He said, if it were my son, I wouldn't let him play. An EKG would reveal that Brody had a possible life-threatening heart condition. You have this, these doctors saying, hey, you know, this test we don't like, this test we don't like, this test we don't like. Here's what we can do to maybe confirm some of these things, and, and here's what we're going to do right now. And, and a lot of that, a kid just gets hit upside the head with, like, you're not playing basketball. The doctor is only there for the initial response. He's not going to see... three weeks later when it gets crying, you know? I was like, man, like, like, what am I gonna do? And I just remember Scotty sitting there and was like, man, like, we're gonna get through this. We got you, like, whatever you need, and, and just know like, you're a part of this family now, so we're gonna take care of our own. It was crazy, like, coming in and immediately feeling like a part of the team, and then it's just like, oh, well, not really. It was like, oh, you know, you can't practice, and. It went from the one thing that I usually use as my escape for like the emotional situations in my life. Like I couldn't even do that. So it was like I had all these emotions that I didn't really understand and then I didn't really know the way to deal with them. I think being able to watch someone handle disappointment and become better afterwards is, is, is what our theology is about. Why would a good God give me this? A good God will let us suffer so that he can have more of a heart in the end. Coach Susie was great, like helping me through the whole, the whole process. I just remember him like right away, like I think after Coach McKay addressed the team about it, was adamantly like, hey, like, like, like I'm praying for you and I just want you to know like I'm praying that God is gonna heal your heart. We exalt you and, and we put all of our faith and trust in you. And that was like the first time for me that I had heard that. Like I had heard people say like, oh, I'm praying for like for you to have emotional strength or like I'm, I'm praying, I'm praying for you and just kind of leaving it at that. But he was like very direct. He said, I'm praying for you. I want you to know that I believe that if you have faith, God will heal your heart. And I was like, what? Like the first time he said it, I was literally like, uh, did I hear you right? And it just developed into like, Anytime I would see him and like he could tell I was down, he was like, just, just remember our prayer, like let this be our prayer. With his collegiate basketball career hanging in the balance, Brody's family sought out a second opinion. But this time the diagnosis was different. Brody was back in the game. I remember my mom drove me back and she drove me back like right as practice was starting. So I walked in and, and I like, told them like, hey, like they said, like they didn't see anything like we were all talking and it was like a really exciting moment so off the mark and hicks gathers in the rebound they have five on the clock gets up to brody hicks back to mayo he'll shoot the three oh, why not? <laughs> there are defining moments in every person's life and for brody his defining moment was his freshman year when he was given a new lease on life and a new chance to play the game he loves if I had been playing and practicing the entire time from the time I got here, I don't think I'd be in nearly the same state with my faith. If I get in the game and you know somebody will come put their arm around me and be like, "Hey, this time last year we didn't think this was gonna this was gonna ever happen," and like, like look, 
look how far we've come kind of thing. And it's always, that's like the cool part is it's always look how far like we've come. Learning that, that God can really do anything and that sometimes like he might do something that I won't understand. One thing it did is it made me a lot more bold in my faith. Like Coach Susie wasn't afraid to say, hey, I've asked God to heal your heart. And then eventually, you know, I was praying that prayer with him. And that, that's kind of encouraging to know like if there's other things going on. I mean, I hope that I won't ever face something that completely rocks my world like that. But, you know, if it does, like maybe I will be bold enough to like step out and like, say, hey, God, I'm praying for this. And some of my teammates have seen like, oh, like, the same thing that I've seen, like, oh, if, if God can do something as big as, you know, completely change this type of situation, then he's certainly capable and more than capable to do anything that we could ask for on a, on a daily basis. And I hope that I, I live that in such a way that it reflects my appreciation and, and gratitude. Well, our thanks to Erica Wolfuck for producing that story. Now, doctors are still monitoring Brody as he continues his basketball career, but thankfully, they now believe his condition is not career or life-threatening, and Liberty Basketball is certainly thrilled to have him as a member of the Flames. All right, we turn now to Warm Hot in Fuego, the part of the show where our guy Rhett comes on, names the top three Liberty athletes of the week. Now, there's a lot of pressure on you, I have to say, each there and every is. week to determine yeah. who deserves this honor. This week especially, now baseball, softball are going. You have a lot of people to choose from. Yeah. Let's begin. Let's cross, get, let's cross a lot of as well. So the pressure really yeah. cranks up for you. Fortunately, yes. God gave you those broad shoulders for a reason he did. to carry the load. Yeah. So, Rhett, start us off. Warm, who you got? Warm, Tori Zavodny, this young lady. Hard to believe, yeah. Matt, that she is a senior. I know. Where has like, the time I, gone, I, Rhett? I don't know. It feels Where? like my child has grown up <laughs> well, and is about to leave. Really? It's, you know, you look at her, yeah. she's not originally a Dot Richardson recruit but she has turned into a dot staple, Absolutely. I would say. She is just out there. Listen to this. When they were in the NISC last year, yeah. they had that one day, three games yeah. in that day. It was a crazy day, right? I remember. She had eight RBIs yeah. in those three games. She also had three runs scored. So she has the clutch factor. No doubt. And she brought that against CMU as well, hitting that triple out there to, to right field, bringing in the runs. So she has just turned into this uh, real leader of the team that has the patience, the wherewithal at the plate, just knows the right time to pick her spots. Absolutely. Exciting time for the softball program with, as well with her leading yeah. the way. All right, from warm now, we go to hot. Who you got? Ashton Baker, this yeah. young lady. Just watched her play against UNC Asheville. was so much, such a treat. And, you know, sometimes I, I'm a bit critical person. Sometimes. Are you? I am sometimes. I try to come across like a nice guy. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, she, you know, turnovers during her first season have been an issue in some games. Yeah. This game, though, biggest game of the year. Yeah. Because if UNC Asheville wins this game, the, the standings are tied. They're yeah. tied for first. One turnover in the game, she comes away, she has 12 points, she follows up with a performance against Winthrop with 15 points, so she is just so mature for her age, and a lot of times too, you see Asheville at the end of the game was like, oh, we're gonna trap them, we're gonna go full yeah. court press, she'd get the ball and just fly up yeah. the court. Her speed factor is huge, just a great play. That one thing you can't teach, yeah. speed, right. she has it big time. She's mm -hmm. been fun to watch. All right, finally now, in Fuego. Your choice for in Fuego this week is who? Dylan Allen, men's baseball team. Men's Obviously baseball. the men's baseball yeah, team. You you love know, doing I that. do like doing that. You know, I just want to be clear with what yes, I'm saying. Absolutely. Yeah, but anyways, for this guy, he walked five times in one game. Program record. Yeah, that's Incredible. Insane. That's been Barry Bonds treatment. Yeah. Right? They didn't want any part of Dylan Allen. And on the season now, he's got eight walks, yeah. which is four more than DJ Artist. So if you're beating DJ at walking, yeah. then you are doing something right Absolutely. in life. And he also had that towering bomb. Yeah. That thing was just a rocket. I think it nailed the train and put a dent <laughs> in the roof. You know, so like this guy, looking like a lot of fun here in his red shirt junior season, yeah. the product of Florida. And you know, I hope he has a continues on to have a great rest of the season. Yeah. Early times for the baseball team, but they look like a team that, you know, it's gonna be a lot of fun to yeah. watch. And exciting for Dylan Allen. He had a couple seasons where injuries just basically yeah. wiped him out for him. Battled through it, now hitting in the cleanup spot and having a lot of success early in the year for the Flames. Really excited yeah, for him. For sure. Brett, great job as always. Well, listen, more coming up on Game On, including a look at an entertaining way that Liberty Hockey helps kids around the world. Stick with us. We'll be right back. Each morning begins around 7. I make breakfast for the kids and get them ready for the day. Mornings can be hectic as I'm running my business from home, and when the kids nap, it's the perfect time to work on my courses. By studying at Liberty University without set login times, I am able to craft my own schedule around what works best for my life. This flexibility allows me to work on my assignments during the day, 
so I can spend time with my husband after he gets home from work. As a parent, I have to balance the week from my daughter's dance class to teaching ballet to church activities. Studying online has allowed me to invest in my education while being a strong example to my children. My name is Kimberly. I'm a mom, a business owner, and a Liberty University student. You might have heard some things about Liberty University, like how we're just a little Christian school in the middle of nowhere, and there's nothing to do here. I mean, come on, you know us. Boring. Boring? Yeah. They say we don't work as hard, think as hard, try as hard. I object. The truth is, well, we might surprise you. Every athlete has a story. Why do they strive? What drives them? Are they just doing this for a game? Or is it about how this struggle changes them? We are here to ask those questions. We are here to tell that story. We are Game On. Well, hey there, friends. Welcome back to Game On. Glad you're here with us. Now, not only did the Flames hockey team set a record this past week, winning their 17th game in a row, which is impressive it in itself. It certainly is. They did it for a great cause. Yeah, right. You know, I've always said this. Great things happen when you combine stuffed animals and hockey. You know, I've said it for years. The Flames you held have. their annual teddy bear toss, and Josh Hamilton came away with the first goal on us. Yeah, that's right. It was an absolute beauty of a goal as well, cutting across the front. But that goal set hundreds of bears raining down onto the ice as fans supported the charity Gleaning for the World. Now, the bears will be distributed to children across the world. And, you know, I've seen this now for a couple of years. Now, it's probably actually it's like four or five, yeah. and it never gets old. No. I absolutely I'm, love it. And I'm it. sure the fans enjoy it as well. You think about some of those traditions, the teddy bear toss. There's the schools that do that with, like, toilet paper yeah. at the first made basket in a basketball <laughs> yeah, game. Fun. Anything like that, the yeah. fans will certainly love Always to get great. behind. Well, listen, that about does it for us this week. Check us out, as always, on social media, at GameOnLU, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, the whole game. And as always, our website, GameOnLU.com. You can find all our feature stories there. For Rhett McGibbon, for Bobby Bowling, I'm Matt Warner. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you right back here next week.